Hello there. Today I want to show you how do I approach to do type safe environment variables in React Router or Remix. So here you can see a very simple app where I'm logging something on the server within the loader and also logging this line here which should be logged on both server and client. And then when you click the button, there is an alert which only runs in the client. So let's see how this app looks. And if I go to my browser and I reload it, you're going to see hello from server and client. If you click here, hello from client. And if we go to the server, you see both hello from the server and also hello from server and client. All good. So when we are on the server, we are able to log stuff from the process.env, right? So if I try to log my session secret in here, I'm gonna see it on the server. And I do have this .env file which has four environment variables. And I want to expose the Google Maps API key and also Stripe public key. The deal is we cannot just log a process env here as we would do in the server maps api key if we do that we're not going to see anything in the browser because we just broke the app we saw that coming how do we approach to be able to have those environment variables go all the way through the client one thing you can do is you can use vit uh, capabilities to do that. You do know that we have something called import.meta.env and this thing here has quite a few things you can use. Like if we go to the browser now we're gonna see this object which has base URL, dev, the mode we are in, production and this is also quite uh, interesting. You can check if you are running on the server or the client using this variable here. If we go on the server, you're going to see SSR is true and in the browser is false. So there is one thing, I'm not sure if you know, but if you prefix your uh, public variables with vit underscore, you're going to be able to see them on that same object. So if we go and check the server now, we do have access to them here and also on the client. So that's what we're going to use. The deal is we do have autocomplete for SSR and as you can see it's a boolean, base URL is a string, but we don't have access to vit google maps API key here. At least it doesn't seem like we have and if we check the type inferred here is any, but if we go to the browser, we actually see the variable here. So what I really want to show you is how to work with those variables in a type safe way. So we have autocomplete and proper types. When we want to type a variable that's external to the system, I usually use Zod. So I'm going to install Zod here. And we can start by creating this env.common.ts file. I like to put this common suffix to my files when I know they can run on both the client and the server. So I can create a function get public env, which for now it's going to return import.meta.env. And I can also export my function here. So now I can go and use that function here, get public env. And now I, I have the same autocomplete because of course we have done nothing different, right? So what I want to do is I want to describe the my expectations for my public environment. I'm going to create a const public env schema here. I'm going to create this sod object. 
So I want it to be an object, an import set here. And as we know, we have vit, vit Google Maps API key. It's going to be a Z string with minimum length of one. And I also want to have the fit stripe public key. There we go. So I can now just use that schema to parse. Parse. Okay, there's a typo here. Let's add E here. And now when we go here and add a dot, we're going to see the other completion that we want. Vit Google Maps API key. And when we check the actual type here, we see that it's a string. So I can now go and change this thing here to use get public env vit stripe public key. I also want to use this approach to make my server environment variables also type safe. So let's go and extract a little function here so we can reuse that on the server. I'm going to create this function called make typed env, which is going to receive a schema. For now, we're just going to say any. It's going to return a function that gets some args, which is an object of unknown values. And then let's start with public env schema parse and then import meta.env. So now we can actually change this function here to this calls get public env equals to make typed env. We're going to pass the public env schema. And for now, we're going to pass the import meta env. Of course, we want to use those schemas, right? So I'm going to change this for schema and also replace this with args. Let's see the type inference here. It's not, not going to help much. So how do we type this? I want to get the schema is a Zod schema, but it could be a schema from other parser. So I'm going to change that so we have a, a very minimum expectation for this schema. As you can see on the line below, the schema has a dot parse. So we just want an object with a function called parse. That parse receives something, I'm going to call data, which is unknown, because it could be anything. It's going to return t, which is the output of the Zod schema. So I'm going to grab this t here as a type parameter. And that's what's going to be returned here. I see nothing here, but if I explicitly type the return of this function, you're going to see there is no errors. So now when I go and check the type of get public env, you see that it's an actual object with the types we want. So now we made sure that the variables we want at runtime are also type checked. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this second call of the function. Because when I want to get my public envs, I can choose to pass the import.meta.env or maybe my process.env or any other source of environment variables. So I have a problem here and I can fix it by passing the import.meta.env. Same thing here, import.meta.env. It should be working, so we go. We do see the secret here, and uh, if we reload the browser, uh, now we're, we're going to see the Google Maps API key here and here, and also if we click here, we have access to the Stripe public key. So how do we reuse that function now? We're going to create a server file now, which is going to be app.env.server.ts. And I'm going to start by describing my env schema. So 
there's one thing. Do you know that we can extend the Zod schema? So let's go and export the schema first. Public environment schema. And I also I'm gonna export the make type to inf function, which we're gonna use in the other file. So now we can actually use public env schema from the neighbor and we can extend that schema by adding a few more attributes to it. I think we had the session secret, which is a Zod string, minimum one. And we also had uh, Stripe, private key, which is also a Zod string, minimum one. And we can add other stuff that we know are on the process.env, such as node env, which can be a z and um, and it could be production, could be development or tests or defaults to development. That should import sub here too. Too. There we go. And now I can have my cons get env, which is make type to env of env schema. Now export it, get env. Now I can actually use this get env here, get env. I'm gonna pass process.env here. Oops, I have an error. I can scroll to the top of the error and see that I don't have the string stripe private key. I probably mistyped it, but this is super cool because if you think about it, now we don't need to have those env.example files because we do have the expectations for our environment variables in one place. So let's check what's wrong in the env file. There we go. It's not stripe private key, it's stripe secret key. So I can change that here. Secret key. Let's see it again. If we restart the server and reload the page, we see the whole process.env here. So I can now use it. Uh, I can just add my auto complete here. And we can use the session.secret as we were doing before. There we go. So I don't like to type the prefix vit every time I want to use those variables. So how about we use string ts so we can go even fancier with the make type in a function? Let's install string ts. So now what we can do here is we can replace replace keys and this replace key is going to go to every object keys and call a replace function and the thing with the string ts library is it's going to uh, change the value at runtime but also change its type expectations so if we replace the vit prefix with nothing and now we see we have a type error uh, which means this is not valid anymore. I'm going to remove this explicit type expectation from here. And if we come here, we're going to see that we do have the session secret, but we don't have the vid Google Maps API key anymore. And if I change it, I can just use Google Maps API key. Same thing here, here. And it should all be working now. There we go. And we can do also other stuff, like if you like to work with camel case, uh, because you are in TypeScript code, you can also use the camel keys function. And then when we come back, we have typos. We can change that to stripe public key, session secret, and Google Maps API key. There we go. Let's see if it's working. Yeah. As expected. 